This is lesson 8.1, graphing f of x equals ax squared. You should be on page 420. In this lesson, you will identify characteristics of quadratic functions and graph and use quadratic functions of the form f of x equals ax squared. I guess one thing I can say here, another way of saying this title, we are graphing quadratic functions. That's what this lesson's about, how to graph a quadratic function. So let's talk about what are characteristics of a quadratic function. Well, I guess the first thing is what the heck is even a quadratic function? A quadratic function is a nonlinear, that means nonlinear, it's not straight. It's a nonlinear function that can be written in the standard form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this should be very familiar from last chapter. Last chapter, you learned how to factor quadratics. Second degree equations are called quadratics. Okay? Quadratics will always give you a U-shaped graph called a parabola. So anytime you have a second degree equation, it's going to graph into this this type of picture that's called a parabola. Okay? In this lesson, you're going to learn how to graph quadratics. You're going to learn how to graph different types of parabolas. Uh, one other thing I should mention here. In this lesson, when you graph the quadratics, we're going to focus in this lesson on qu quadratics where B and C are zero. So if they're zero, they're not there. So like these won't be there, we're going to fact focus on graphing y equals ax squared. That's why we had the title of the lesson, Graphing Those Kind, okay, where we don't have any b or c value. Let's talk about characteristics of a quadratic. The parent quadratic function is f of x equals x squared. Remember, the parent is the most basic kind, so a is 1, B is 0, C is 0. This is the most basic quadratic. And here's a picture of what it would look like. The graphs of all other quadratic functions are transformations of this graph, the parent function. So let's review what in the heck is a transformation. A transformation is sliding this graph into a new position or stretching it, or shrinking it, or reflecting it. So when they use the word transformations, they're saying any other quadratic would be taking this function, the parent function, either sliding it, stretching it, shrinking it, or reflecting it. The lowest point on a parabola that opens up, like you see in the picture here, or the highest point on a parabola that opens down is called the vertex. So here's the vertex of this quadratic. The vertex of the parent function is always 0, 0. So you can see right here the vertex is at 0, 0. That's always true on the parent function. Now there's a vertical line they drew here in this picture. That vertical line divides the parabola into two symmetric parts and that vertical line is always called the axis of symmetry. And this is important, the axis of symmetry will always pass through the vertex. So again, that's super important. Axis of symmetry will pass through the vertex all the time. Wherever the vertex of your parabola is at, that's where your axis of symmetry is at. Now for the parent function, the axis of symmetry is going to be zero. You notice this dotted line would be where x is equal to 0. Because the vertex is at 0, 0. You notice how x is 0 for the vertex also. So the x value of the vertex will always be the same as the axis of symmetry. So let's look at this picture here. Consider this graph of the quadratic. Let's identify the characteristics such as the vertex. Well, right now you can see in this picture the vertex is 1 left and 2, and 2 down, so the vertex is negative 1, negative 2. 
That means the axis of symmetry has to be at negative 1. Let me highlight this. Do you notice how the x value of the vertex matches the axis of symmetry? That's always going to be true. You can see the function is decreasing here on the left and then increasing on the right. What I would like you to do is pause the video and I would like you to identify the characteristics of the quadratic function here and its graph. Now remember, that means we want to label the vertex, the axis of symmetry, describe where this is decreasing and where it's increasing. Pause the video and do that you should have gotten these results. So here we see decreasing, increasing, the vertex is 2, negative 3, and the axis of symmetry is at 2. And here we're increasing, and now over on the right, decreasing, because this parabola is opening down. The vertex is at negative 3, 7, and you notice how the vertex and the axis of symmetry match. They're both at negative 3. Let's talk about graphing these now. Remember, the graph of f equals a times f of x is a vertical stretch or shrink by a factor of a of the graph of y equals f of x. So you learned that earlier this year when we worked with linear equations. When you're multiplying by some number, that number, if it's greater than 1, it's going to stretch what you have. If it's between 0 and 1, it's going to shrink what you have. And then if we're multiplying by a negative, that's going to reflect our graph. So let's keep that in mind as we look at these. So here, if we're graphing f of x equals ax squared and a is bigger than 1, I misspoke. If a is positive, I meant to say. If a is bigger than 1, we're stretching the graph. Think of money. If you have $20 and you multiply 20 by anything more than 1, it's going to give you more. That's stretching. But what happens if you take your money and you multiply by some fractional amount between 0 and 1, like a half? If I take 20 times half, I'm going to have less than 20. That's shrinking what I have. So it's the same thing with graphing. If A, if that number that we're multiplying by, by x squared, that number A, if it's greater than 1, it's stretching my graph. If it's between 0 and 1, it's shrinking my graph. Now, if it's a negative, if A is less than 0, okay, it's going to reflect my graph. Now, one other thing. If I'm multiplying by a negative number less than negative 1, like if I'm multiplying by negative 2, not only is it going to reflect my graph, think about multiplying by 2, it's also going to stretch it. So I would have a reflection and a stretch. But if I multiply by something in between negative 1 and 0, like negative half, the negative will reflect my graph, but the half will shrink it. So that's a little review of some things we've already learned. Okay, so let's talk about graphing these. And you can use your calculator to help you. I want to graph g of x equals 2x squared and compare it to the graph of the parent function. So I can use my calculator. Let's do g of x equals 2x squared on our calculator. So I'm going to my calculator. I'm going to do y for g of x equals 2x raised to the second power. And I'll make a table then. Second graph. Okay, there's my table. And now you'll notice this table. Let me circle this table. Okay, you'll notice that's the exact same table that they now have in the book. And you can see that here. I'm going to circle it here. There's that table. So now, just go ahead and plot those points. Negative 2, 8 would be here, and negative 1, 2, and 0, 0, and 1, 2, and 2, 8. Now, the parent function. You notice how g of x, we've doubled everything. It's been stretched by 2. So the parent function, these are all double the parent function. So the parent function should be, their y value should be 4. This is doubled, so 1, 0, 1, 4. So the point negative 2, 4 is the parent function. Negative 2, 4, you see that here. And negative 1, 1 uh, here. 
and 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. So you can see the parent function, I'll outline it in blue. Okay? Now I want you to compare this to the parent function. Now when you compare, there's two things. We've got to write two sentences. Here's why I say write two sentences. We don't want to forget there's two important things. The first important thing, compare the location of the vertex of each function. Well, g of x, its vertex is at 0, 0. The parent function also has a vertex at 0, 0. So you notice they both have the same vertex. So there's point number one. Point number two, compare how they open. Do they stretch, shrink, reflect, etc.? Now g of x, we're multiplying by two. That's doubling everything compared to the parent function. That's stretching it. So we're going to make that clear, okay? Both graphs open up, and graph of g is a vertical stretch by a factor of two when compared to the graph of f. So you notice how I'm comparing two things. Where's the vertex? Do they stretch, shrink, reflect? All right? And then we're going to do the same thing here. So example three. We want to graph h of x equals negative one-third x squared and compare it to the graph of f of x equals x squared. Now this might be something that might help you too. Let's put these both in our calculator this time. And you can see here I plugged in, um, I plugged in the graph y equals negative one-third x raised to the second power. And then I also graphed the parent function, or I put it in. So now when I make my table, the nice thing is you'll see both. Okay, so what I'm highlighting here are the y values of the function y equals negative one-third x squared, but over here are the y values for the parent function. So it makes it easy to graph them both. Okay? Now, since we have decimals, I wanna, might want to pick whole amounts. Like you notice, negative 3 gives me negative 3 for y equals negative one-third x squared, and uh, negative 6 gives me negative 12, and so on. Okay? I'm also going to show you that 3 gives me negative 3, and 6 gives me negative 12 just like it does in the table in the book. And you can see that right here. I'm, gonna, I'm circling. This is exactly matching the table that was on our calculator. So they went ahead, they plotted those points for the actual function, h of x equals negative one-third x squared. They took the points for the parent function, plotted those. Now we have to write two sentences comparing these things. Now, first of all, they have the same vertex. Okay? And if they have the same vertex, the book puts some other things I'm not going to make you. If they have the same vertex, they have to have the same axis of symmetry. Okay, let's compare how they open. The graph of H, however, opens down and it's wider. So we don't want to use those terms. We want to say H is a vertical shrink by a factor of a third and it's a reflection of the graph of f. So we're reflecting and shrinking the graph by a factor of one-third. I would like you to try now, pause the video, and I want you to graph the function and compare it to the graph of the parent function for numbers three, four, and six. Pause the video, take graph paper, and take a few minutes and do those three. And I'm back, and here's question number three. We wanted to graph g of x equals 5x squared and compare it to the parent function. So you notice I went to my calculator for g of x. I made a table. It's right here. And I plotted those points in black. There, the function in black is g of x, and then the parent function is in blue. And I want to compare the two. You notice they have the same vertex. So I made that point here. However, g of x is stretched by a factor of 5 when compared to f of x. When you multiply something by 5, it's 5 times greater. This is being stretched. It's narrowing this out because it's, it's all these values are 5 times bigger than the parent function values. And then here's a look at number 4. This is question 4 here. 
and I compared h of x equals one third x squared to the parent function. You can see the picture of both graphs. Here is the table. You can see the table I made for h of x. And now you notice they both have the same vertex, but h of x has shrunk compared to f of x by a factor of a third. And then to wrap it up, on the practice number six, p of x equals negative three x squared. You notice this is reflected and stretched by a magnitude of negative three. So negative is reflecting, three is stretching, has the same vertex. They will ask you to solve real life problems using parabolas in this lesson. The diagram at the left shows the cross section of a satellite dish where x and y are measured in meters. Find the width and depth. So the width of the dish is from here to here. So let's look at it in the picture. I have to go from here to here. Now you notice this is x equals 2. So this means from here to here is 2 units. And we have x equals negative 2 over here. So this is 2 units. Does it make sense that the dish must be 4 units across? Okay, so the width is four units. Now let's get the depth. The depth would be from here to here. Okay, that's my depth. So here's the point zero, zero. So this has, you know, this is zero units high for y, but the dish goes up to one unit high for y. You can see that here, one unit high. So the dish is one unit high, which means the depth is one meter, okay? So all we're doing is we're really using the domain and range. The domain of this graph for x, let me write it out, the domain is from negative two to two. Can you see how that's four units wide? And the range of the graph is from zero to one, and that's one unit wide, okay? I'm going to pause the video here. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in class.